Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be the first installation in a series of videos um, in which I talk about a timing repair on the M272 engine, which powers my 2007 Mercedes-Benz ML350. Now I have some notes here with me so I can kind of remember everything I want to talk about. Um, but a lot of you guys probably already know that the M272 engine, which powered a lot of the 2005 to 2009 Mercedes-Benz um, vehicle models, were notorious for timing issues. So the most common type of timing issue on this vehicle was basically the balance shaft gears getting chewed up to the point that there was very little to no contact between the balance shaft gears and the timing chain. So practically the timing was in disarray. So I think a lot of these balance shafts were getting chewed up because the material was softer than they should have been. So possibly the heat treatment of the bath stock from which the balance shafts were made, you know, the heat treatment wasn't done right. I'm talking about things like, you know, annealing, quenching, hardening, um, carburization and things like that. So um, if the heat treatment isn't done right, then any component made from that bar stock will automatically have a problem as well. It won't be quite as hard as it's meant to be. Okay, so I think that's what happened for that. Another common timing problem on these engines was the timing chain guides basically getting broken into a thousand and one pieces. Like so many pieces, it just got disintegrated. And then what you have to do is go in there, clean up, clean all the pieces out, um, clean out your oil pan and also a good idea to replace your oil pump while you're doing that. So finally, the timing chains are also quite known for breaking. And so, you know, typically you have to replace the timing chain on these engines. You know, if you're going to have the vehicle for a while, you are going to replace the timing chain at some point. So that was also another common issue on, on the M272 engine. Um, now, one thing I wanted to mention is if you are going to do any timing job on this engine, it will be a good idea to replace all the timing components once and for all. Um, so for example, if your balance shaft was bad, you would replace the chain as well. You would replace the guides, you know, the tensioner and all that stuff. So um, just something to keep in mind. Okay, so the videos I'm gonna be sharing here is gonna be a series of videos and I'm really gonna be sharing my diagnostic process and my repair process for this work that I did. And you know, if you like the content that I'm sharing, I'm so inclined, um, consider subscribing and turn on notifications and also sharing, liking, and of course, leave your comments below. So let's get right into it. Um, the first thing you want to do is to verify that you actually have a timing problem, a major timing problem. Uh, because if your camshaft sensor is bad, it would throw a code, you know, and complain of a timing problem. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a major timing problem, which actually is being caused by a major timing component, like I talked about before. So what you want to check is, first of all, um, setting codes should be present. Now, what you want to see is a P0016, a P0017, P0018, and P0019 all these four codes need to be present at the same time, okay? If you only have like one or two of these codes, you know, it's not a justification to crack your engine open because it will be just a cam sensor issue or a cam adjusting solenoid issue. So that's something you need to keep in mind. You need to have all those four codes present, P0016, P0017, P0018, P0019. You need to have all of them present in order for you to consider, you know, doing a major timing job. The rationale, the thought process behind this is, it's going to be next to impossible for all four cam sensors to be bad or all four cam shaft adjusting solenoids to be bad. It's just next to impossible for all four to be bad at the same time. Okay. Um, so that is why you need to make sure that you have all these four codes present, you know, in order to think about doing a major timing job. So before you get into starting to pull engines or anything like that, um, there are ways of checking timing on this engine. And there's a simple way I'm going to show you guys here shortly. Um, you can do that and that can kind of give you an idea as to if you need to proceed to yank the engine out or you just have to do some kind of work um, without pulling the engine. Um, I didn't mind by pulling the engine because I just wanted some more space around it. And also um, I had some oil leaks and stuff that I wanted to take care of. The engine was kind of dirty. I wanted to wash it and stuff after the job was done. So that's why I did that. But, you know, the point is you would have to check. You need to make some, do some basic checks and stuff, you know, of your timing before you kind of proceed to move the engine. So I want to show you guys that right now. Let's go check it out. So I know some of you are looking at this thinking, wait, is the engine already out? Yes, it is. Um, that's because I didn't do a good job of recording the point where I was actually checking the timing when the engine was in the car. So um, I'm kind of doing this after the fact. So this is me fixing my mistake from the start, because if I'd recorded that portion, I would just put it in the video and had the video edited, but I didn't do that. So I'm kind of going back now to show you guys what you need to do while the engine is in the car before you pull the engine out. This is very important, okay? You need to check this before you yank the engine out. So 
um, this is me going back into time to basically, if you like, kind of fix my mistake or something. But anyway, I just want to show you guys real quick what to do to check your timing, your basic timing, they call it, you know, before um, you decide, you make the decision on whether to pull the engine or not. So let's check it out. So using an E8 Torx, I've got an E8 Torx socket over here. It's a quarter inch. I need to take the two cam sensors off. Now, what you need to do is actually take them the four off, but I'm just going to use the two for the example. So you need to take one, two, three, four off. Okay, so. Now that these two pump sensors are off, I need to turn the harmonic balancer to 305 degrees. Um, the degree marks are on it, the balancer, and then there's a mark over there right on the engine where I can kind of use as my gauge for that, you know, um, that location I want to go to. So let me go ahead and turn that 305 degrees. Now, when you turn it to 305, what are you looking for? Let's take a look. Now, if you look in there, you see that there are inscriptions on the camshaft adjuster, and all those inscriptions should be um, centered in the four holes. Remember, I only took two sensors out, but it should be the same on the other side as well. Uh, you should see the inscriptions right in the middle if your timing is correct, okay? So if you see that um, the inscriptions are not centered in the holes, then your timing is off and you will need to do a timing job on um, on the engine. Now, there's one important thing I want you guys to remember. Um, if you turn this to 305 degrees and you don't see the inscriptions, turn it again. Because remember, you need two turns of the crank to get one turn of the cam. So if you don't get it the first time with 305, go all over again, back to 305 again. And you should get those inscriptions to line up. Now, I thought those inscriptions were on the uh, cam adjuster. I could be wrong. It could be the valve. There's a valve that sits in the middle of the adjuster, basically a threaded valve that holds the adjuster to the cam. It could be that, but you should see those inscriptions in there. Okay, so um, something to keep in mind. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this installation of the video series. Um, in the next video that I put out, I'm going to kind of show you how I prep the vehicle for engine removal. So I'm talking things like uh, removing the wiring harness and um, draining fluids and stuff like that. So nothing exciting, but that video will be coming out after this one. So um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your time and see you in the next video.